Hi there, welcome to Future Looks. I'm Eric. We're going to take a look at Gigabyte's Z68 XP UD5 motherboard. Uh, it's second revision to their original, which was just the Z68X uh, UD5 B3. This, of course, is the same board, just a few different uh, changes to it. Uh, we think you'll probably enjoy the one that gives you access to Sandy Bridge, uh, Sandy Bridge's feature, which is Virtue and of course all the extra bells and whistles you're going to want on your Sandy Bridge motherboard. So both boards are pretty much identical. There's a few implementation component, little electrical changes here, some, some of the changes I've given to it. Of course this one here is uh, a little extra tuned for the end users. On the original here we didn't have uh, any video out uh, ports which give you access to Sandy Bridge's Virtue. Here we've got an HDMI port that gives you that function and we find that actually to be quite you quite uh, efficient especially for those who want optimal video out for whatever purpose they might use this platform for. Uh, some of the basic features that you are going to get with this board are standard uh, all around USB 3.0 SATA 3 or 6 gigabit per second. Uh, of course our 108 dB Blu-ray playback. Uh, you get quite a little bit of better rich audio out of the audio when you're playing things, especially through your HDMI. Uh, their VRM is uh, 20 phase power. That's good for overclockers looking for a little extra uh, something from their processors. We know that k -Skew, Intel, Sandy Bridge can do it. This is what the board is intended to help support. We've got NVIDIA SLI, Crossfire X, of course Virtue. Uh, other, some of the other features that this board offers now is Touch BIOS through Windows, which is pretty handy, especially if you want to do some tweaking, tuning, whatever you might have uh, in store for your system. Now, both boards look quite similar. A lot of the layout's the same. Uh, power button, your reset, of course, CMOS clear. Uh, even the SATA, of course, are all in the same location. Most of the chipset coolers, everything is in the same spot. The black is your SATA 2 and your white is your native SATA 3 and the Z68 chipset. Now the I.O. portion of the board is quite a bit different only in one respect even though you can't see it visually there's an HDMI port here this gives you access to Intel QuickSync which is built into Sandy Bridge processor the original uh, UD3 didn't have it so the XP UD5 UD5 pardon does have it so again very similar looking layout other than just some USB combo ports and uh, uh, the HDMI port out. Now one of the features you don't see on the motherboards is the PCI Express 3.0. Now you can't see it on either but with a few chip adjustments they've added it to the PCI slots. So if your, PCI, your CPU is a PCI 3.0 compatible you'll have those functions on the board uh, through each slot which will run SLI or Crossfire X just have to make sure that you have Sandy Bridge E or something similar. The back of the IOS area you can see that there are some red and uh, yellow USB eSATA combo ports that change color a little bit. Uh, you have Firewire up top, a uh, little extras, and then the USB 3.0 blue. You also have your Realtek integrated LAN and uh, also support as your optical and SPDIF out. And for those who are looking for the extra 108 dB audio, some, you can get that out of the six analog ports that are provided by uh, Gigabyte. Inside each box, you get your standard allotment. We have our pa paper from our motherboard. And of course, uh, your manual for getting things all set up. Your driver disk CD. If you don't want to use the drivers on here, you can at least use the LAN first and then download the up-to-date drivers. Some more literature on getting things set up, some safety, some of it uh, quick re re reference. And of course, uh, this one's for getting your Intel Smart Response, which is set up on the disk here. You just have to install, and it gives you a really quick, uh, easy way of getting your Z68 features set up with Intel Smart Response with an SSD. There's a, also an IO shield. You have four. 90 degree along with your PCI crossfire bracket 
and of course a two and co two and a half inch bay faceplate here. It gives you extra USB connectivity to the front of your case if you don't have enough on the back. Uh, that, that's you can switch some of these uh, out pretty easily. The way this works is you plug this into a proprietary port here at the bottom of the board and it makes it real easy for installing uh, without having too many wires hanging out the back of your case. Presently users can find, consumers can find this board on the shelves for about $269 US and Canadian. We've seen some sales at around $250 uh, mark and that's because you're going to get quite a bit of uh, extra performance out of these, out of the UD5 since it is tuned for a little more than just your basic use. You can get more overclocking out of it. Uh, ultimate connectivity for some of the features, especially shared across the Z68 platform. Uh, very good looking black PCB with the charcoal gray. So it's tuned for those users, built for those users who really like a presentable system, maybe something they're into modding, or if they're just looking for a general overall really attractive system. So that's your Z68 XP UD5 from Gigabyte. We'd like to thank you for watching and have a look at the rest of our Roundup reviews and uh, we'll see you again soon.